An 8-year-old boy with progressive dimness of vision in the left eye was hit with a nib of a pen for which he was operated 8 months ago. On examination he showed perception of light, circumciliary congestion, central corneal edema, brown pupil and a flat anterior chamber. There was an adherent leukoma in the inferior nasal quadrant, iridodialysis at 6 o'clock and his IOP was 60 mm mercury. His right eye was normal 6-6. An anterior segment OCT showed a brown pupil with flat AC with inferior nasal quadrant showing corneal scar. B scan of the eye showed clear vitreous and a attached retina with a flat anterior chamber. He was admitted immediately and IOP was managed with topical and oral anti-glaucoma medication and intravenous mannitol was started. Post mannitol his Eplanation tension came down to 48. The next day, his IOP again shot up to 56 millimeters of mercury. He was given a second intravenous mannitol, and his IOP then reduced to 13 the second day. After the IOP came down this, with the second intravenous mannitol, pupil began to dilate. anterior chamber started forming superiorly and a convexity was seen in the pupillary area lens as was seen after dilation was clear so a traumatic corneal opacity with vascularization was seen and an iris cyst was unveiled the cyst on the anterior segment oct showed to be of the iris pigment epithelium On review of literature one found a classification of iris cyst to be of primary and secondary types which could be managed either with total excision with or without iridocyclectomy or intracystic ethanol irrigation and alcohol induced sclerosis So on the day of the surgery and hour before the procedure After bringing down the IOP to 11 mm of mercury with intravenous mannitol the child was taken for minimally invasive cyst aspiration and chemical ablation of cyst epithelium with absolute alcohol the child was taken under IV sedation and topical anesthesia under microscope the vascularized corneal opacity in the inferior nasal quadrant was seen very clearly two thirds of the vertically oval mid dilated pupil was seen to be occupied by the iris cyst aspiration of the cyst with a 30 gauge needle on a 3 way t extension into a 2 ml syringe was commenced the eye being soft one can observe the gentle cajoling of the syringe into the cyst till the bevel is buried into the cyst cavity a pierce hoskin one tooth forcep is used to stabilize the eye It is very important to bury the bevel into the cyst before commencing aspiration so that no fluid of the anterior chamber is aspirated nor any fluid of the cyst leaked into the anterior chamber. It is important to have a single entry point into the cyst. The 2 ml syringe attached to the 3 way in a straight line is meant for aspiration and the syringe attached at right angle is for alcohol injection and aspiration. So while aspirating cyst contents the right angle port is closed and after the contents of the cysts are aspirated one can see the cyst line collapsed in the lower one third of the pupil now the three way is turned to close the straight syringe and open the right angle syringe port and 1 ml absolute alcohol is injected slowly one can see the cyst inflating and now again occupying 2/3 of the pupil now maintaining the same position of the three way syringe and stabilizing the aspiration of the alcohol from the cyst is commenced after exposure to it for 1 minute and after the cyst has begun to turn gray due to alcohol induced sclerosis The needle is gently withdrawn after the cyst contents have been completely aspirated and it collapses so that none of its contents leak into the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is washed and formed with PSS at the end of the procedure. Postoperatively on the slit lamp there was a progressive retraction of the cyst and the IOP came down to 40 mm of mercury. 
An intravenous mannitol was given after which the IOP came down to 24 mm of mercury and the vision improved to 624. One could see the shrinking iris cyst and a well-formed superior interior chamber with clear cornea. The shrinking cyst surface was seen on the anterior segment OCT inferocentrally and a peripheral anterior synechia nasally and inferotemporally. On the post-op day 6, a shrinking cyst and the reduced peripheral anterior synechia and inferior corneal edema was seen on the slit lamp. The fundus showed normal disc and retina and tortuous temporal vessels. At the end of two weeks, the patient was on prednisolone, homotropine, sodium chloride, betoxolol, moxifloxacin, dorzolamide drops and oral acetazolamide. Vision had improved to 6-9 with correction and IOP had come down to 14 mm of mercury with a normal fundus. At the end of 8 weeks, the patient was still on prednisolone, dorzolamide, sodium chloride, vision 6-9, IOP 13 and the cyst had shrunken and there was a mild corneal edema inferiorly and the endothelial count was 1676. At the end of 17 weeks, all medication was stopped. Vision was restored to 6x with the IOP maintained at 13 mm of mercury without drugs. So a micro shot of alcohol was successful in restoring vision to 6x in a painful blind eye.